Okay, good evening everybody and welcome to our third webinar this week on T-Levels. Um, tonight we're concentrating on our three digital T-Level offers um, and we're joined by our Michelle uh, Chapman, our Programme Manager for the Digital Provision. Um, so before we introduce Michelle, just a quick reminder that this uh, talk is being recorded, but don't worry, we can't see you, so you won't be included on it. Um, and we're also going to make it available in a few days, so if you miss anything, you can watch it back. Um, and you can, of course, ask us questions throughout. So you'll see at the top of the screen a Q&A button. Simply click on that and you can type in any questions you might have. Um, it does take a bit of a delay um, by the time we've said something before it reaches you, about 30 seconds to a minute. So don't be shy in asking questions because we might uh, not see them in time. So do ask questions throughout. OK, so now we'll go over to Michelle Chapman to introduce us to her courses. Hello everybody and welcome. It's lovely to have a chat to you today about the digital T-levels. So what we're going to cover today as can be seen in the next slide. Uh, we're going to have a quick look at what the T-levels are and looking at the three digital pathways that we offer here at the college, why you should be looking at choosing Farnborough as your option, what are the progression notes and finally how you would apply if you are interested. So welcome to the next level. So T-levels have been designed with employers. That's why they are so good, because the awarding bodies have worked closely with various employers, nationally and internationally, to find out exactly what the needs are for our next um, cohort of young people going into the workplace. So the qualifications are very up to date and very industry relevant. And you'll gain vital work experience alongside your studies. And that's because all of the T-levels include a 45 day work placement. So they boost your career prospects by teaching you real hands on technical skills. So what you will learn in the classroom are the skills that you would need to go into industry so that you'll be work ready from day one. And all the T levels are equivalent to three A levels. So they provide a route not only into your chosen career, but if you do decide that you want to carry on with higher education, they will allow access onto university courses as well. So they are the first steps towards your career and each of our digital T levels are broken down into three areas. You have a core content which is covered during your first year. The second year has a specialist content. So this is where you specialise on your chosen pathway. And as I say, they all have 45 days uh, work experience that is concluded before the end of your two years. Uh, just a quote from one of our current second year T-level students. This is Will and Will has now completed his work placement and he went to work for the Department for Education. But a comment he made was the thing that stood out the most about the placement is that the work he will do will actually be for work. He'll be doing proper work as an employee as part of a team. And I can say after Will's work placement, we got an absolutely glowing report back from the DFA who really appreciated the skills that he'd learned before he got to them and he was a valuable member of their team. So now a little bit more about the um, individual pathways that we offer. So the core content, uh, each of the three pathways has core content that is studied in the first year and this will introduce you to the dynamic digital sector, exploring everything from key concepts in data, so using data, gathering data, security, testing, to the wider influences of the business context and culture. So the first year is very much about gaining skills and knowledge that you would need to go into the the workplace with the second year taking you further down your chosen route. 
So the core content, uh, the two digital T levels, business services and support services, they actually have all of the same elements in their first year, which you can see listed on your screens now. And the digital production design and development does have slightly different elements, but in actual fact, what we do is we teach a common first year so that all our students cover all elements of the three pathways so that they have extra skills and knowledge to take into the workplace with them. So if you decide to go down the digital business services route, the occupational specialist content here will lead you into careers such as being a data technician. So it's for people who want to work with data, so spreadsheets, databases, gathering data, analysing data. Um, you may or may not have heard of the term big data, but companies like, for example, Amazon, where they have millions of customers around the world, they are dealing with huge quantities of data Data and they need data analysts to actually look at that data and move that forward. The digital production design and development course, that is specifically for people who want to do coding. So if you're interested in coding, you want to be a programmer, software engineer, um, web developer, games tester, um, games developer, e-learning developer, that is the route that you would want to be looking at. For the digital support services, the occupational specialism here is to look at hardware. So it's looking at networking, security, cabling, uh, all aspects to do with hardware and the technical side of using um, IT. So why choose Farnborough? Well, obviously I think we are the best and that's why I think you should come, but um, some of the reasons why we're already established in connecting students with work placements and have great links with local employers just to name a few they are on the screen there and we are building literally week on week um, the employers that we're working with lecturers bring subjects to life by drawing on our own experience so everybody on the team has worked in industry and has links with industry and they're bringing that experience into the class through and sharing it with the students and we've developed new and dedicated facilities that are just for our T-level students so coming into either of our work areas with our classrooms is like stepping into an office environment where you are expected to become a member of this team where we're collaborating working together and developing new skills and knowledge and using up-to-date technology to do that. So just some of the facilities that we, we've um, discussed already are that we have specially designed classrooms and work areas for the T-levels and they are all using the latest technology. So progression from your T-level, they have been designed specifically with employers to look to get people into employment directly after the course so that you are very ready to start work from day one. But they do also give you the opportunity to go on to higher or degree level apprenticeships or even stay in higher education full time. So you really are opening up your options on what you can do. And we also offer a degree with, um, here at Farnborough. So you could even stay with us if you wanted to stay local, keep your fees down and um, be working with with sorry, be working with the team that you're already established with in a place that you already know. So for our progression routes directly from the T-levels, we offer an HNC and HND. So HNC being the first year of the course, with HND being the second year of the course, both with Pearson. Um, and as I say, with teaching staff you're already familiar with. And a third year is possible to top up to a BSc honours degree, which is validated by the University of Surrey. So a really good degree if that's the route you wanted to take or if you fancied going a little bit of a sidestep we also offer a two-year accelerated degree in game design and development again here at the college working with the team that you're already established with and the great thing about that is it can be done in two years 
So just so that you're aware that I did say at the beginning, the qualification T level is equivalent directly to three A levels. And that, what does that mean? Well, with A levels, you get UCAS points and the T level have equivalent UCAS points. And you can see the grading there and how it works. So joining us is simple. You can join us on our website, which is farn-ct.ac.uk. Search for the T-level pathway that you're interested in, add that course to your basket and follow the steps to apply online. Once we've got your application, you'll be invited for a short interview. They are conducted online. It is very informal in that um, we just ask you some questions to see about your suitability for the course and you get to ask us lots of questions as well. You'll then be, if we made an offer, invited to attend summer college, which is in June. That's one day where you come into the college, you meet other students who have also applied for the course, you get to meet the teaching team, you get to see the facilities, and we put you through a few activities that would be similar to the sorts of things you would do if you were to join us on the course, just to give you a really good idea of what it would be like to be a student here at the college and then you come and enrol in August once you've got your GCSE results. Coming up later this week, so tomorrow, we have um, a similar talk with T-levels in business and accounting. Thank you ever so much for listening. It's over to you if you have any questions. So Michelle, while we uh, give people a chance to um, type in their questions, um, what sort of grades do Year 11s need to get onto these courses? Yeah, so we ask for five GCSEs at grade four or equivalent, and they do need to include maths and English. OK, and in terms of those work placements, how do people go about that? You know, because at school, I think the schools organise some of it, but you know, sometimes students are expected to find find their work placement as well. Is that the same with the T level? So we do initially ask students to see if they can find their own placement. And the reason behind this is because the digital world is so diverse, everybody has a slightly different interest. Somebody might want to go into banking, somebody else in game design. So if students are able to find their own placement, it's going to be much more relevant to their interests. They're going to find something they want to do. But of course, not everybody has contacts where they can find their own. And so the college does have a coordinator who finds places Placements. They're making links now for next year and so that we can help any student that is unable to find a work placement, we can do that. Perfect. And in terms of the current cohort, um, they're the first year of uh, T-levels is kind of, they're in their final year now, aren't they? So the first group are about to finish. Yes. Um, what kind of things are they going on to do next? OK, so we've got a couple who are looking to do higher apprenticeships and we have one who is actually going off to do a game degree. So they have decided to take that that route. And um, the, the one particular student I mentioned who had a very successful work placement, he's been invited to apply for a, a job with that company. OK, so yeah, because that's a good point, isn't it? That if you do your placement with a company, there's a reasonable chance they'll take a shine to the student and actually Absolutely, them. yes. So if they do well, we've spoken to several employers now and they have said they've expressed an interest in taking on students for their work placement with a view to being able to offer them full time work at the end of it. Yeah, well, not the end cool. of their work placement at the end of their course. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, finish, we don't want to lose them early. Finish the course first. Yeah. So uh, if anyone has any questions, we haven't had any come through yet, um, but do do type them in if you have any questions. Um, so Michelle, in terms of, so we've got the course and the T level, are, are there any extra things students can do um, during the week to get involved 
as well you know to add a bit extra to their CVs or to have a bit of fun? Yes yeah, so as part of all our T-levels I did mention they have a common first year and part of that is security and um, the, the real hot topic at the moment of course is cyber security and we are a Cisco Academy and Cisco are the world leaders in things like security and networking and so we're very lucky that we're able to offer their courses at the same time as students taking their T-level. So they get two for the price of one by completing a Cisco course, which if students apply to do it part time would cost them a minimum of £500 to do. We actually include it as part of the T-level, so they will be leaving with additional qualifications. And there's also other things like the cyber security qualification as well. And they're all built into their first year and second year for them. Perfect. OK, we have had a question come through. Uh, how many places are available on the course? Uh, we don't actually limit the number of places. We just make more classes. So once we get to around about the sort of 2025, the maximum number of computers that we have in our rooms, then if we go over that, we actually make more groups. So this year we actually started with two groups of first years, for example. Perfect, thank you. Right, we've had a couple more come through. Um, somebody has asked, at what point in the course do the students go on work placement? So we felt it best as a team and in discussions with employers that if they're going to maximise their time on their work placement, the best time to go out is in their second year. Other T-levels find it better at other times, but with ours, we want to give them the maximum input in terms of skills and knowledge so that they can get the most out of their work placement. So ours is built into their second year. Thank you. OK, another question. How is the course for someone who is already experienced in programming? Uh, fantastic because there's so many different elements to the course as I say security hardware looking at databases spreadsheets um, there's a little bit for everything and every student now comes to us with some knowledge of something but not all knowledge of everything so um, the programming language that we use is Python so if you're already learning Python and and um, you feel competent in the use of that that's brilliant because because we can then just stretch you further and higher with that. Right, thank you. Um, we have had another question. Do you take students who are restarting year 12? As long as they have got the entry requirements with the GCSEs, I'll, I'll say again, that's five grade fours, including maths and English. Absolutely. OK, so that's not a not a reason not to come. Um, what happens if you don't get those grades? Is there a, any other options? Yes, yeah, so we have a drop down option of our level two transition program and that has been designed to be a pathway to T levels. So our students currently do a level two BTEC as part of that transition and they are also required to retake their maths and or their English, assuming that's what they didn't get in in the first place. So it means taking, that's a one year course, so it means taking one year um, longer at college in order to finish your T level. OK, so the door doesn't close. There's always a... Definitely not. OK, we have, um, we've got lots of good questions now, so this is great. Keep them coming if you have any more, by the way. Um, can you give us some information on exams and assessment? Yes, absolutely. So the T levels are all exam based in terms of the grades. So throughout the year, you will be set mini projects and class tasks, um, mini exams, just so that we can assess what level you're working at and any gaps in your skills or knowledge. But the actual final grade at the end of the first year, you take two core written paper exams, depending on your pathway will depend how long those exams are. They range from two hours to two and a half hours. And you also do an employer set project. The employer set project, again, depending on your pathway, is around about 15 to 20 hours. Obviously, we don't lock the students in a room for 20 hours. That wouldn't be reasonable. 
they're actually done over what we call an exam window. So they will be covered over days in a set period of time. And that's a very practical assessment, assessing their skills as well as their knowledge. At the end of that, the, the three exams are graded. They're marked by um, the awarding body, so either Pearson or NCFA, and they are given a grade for that. That grade is A star to E, so exactly the same as A levels. And then in their second year, they do um, an occupational specialism exam. Again, depending on which pathway you take, they can be between 65 and 85 hours. So they are done over a much longer period of time. And that is graded again by the awarding body. Uh, but there's no written exam in the second year. It is all practical. Fantastic, thanks. Um, I think that answered someone else's question about how the course is graded as well. Um, We've had, uh, how is the course for someone that hasn't studied IT before? Uh, no problem at all, because we assume that everybody comes to us with no knowledge and we start on that basis. So as with like the programming that was mentioned earlier, some people will come with knowledge. Some people have built their own computer. Other people will have been programming for years, but we have to assume no knowledge because nobody knows exactly the same thing and we build from there. Of course, it's going to be a steep learning curve in the areas where people have no knowledge at all and they're going to have to put in a bit of extra work in those early days to catch up to speed with the others. But we always assume that people know nothing about what it is we're talking about and build from there. Great, thank you. Um, somebody has asked, is using Python for programming mandatory? And I'm glad you mentioned Python earlier because I'd have been confused by that as a non-IT person. It, it is mandatory. So it's written in by um, the body that are actually above the awarding body. So it's not Pearson and NCFA. They have actually been told by government. Um, Python is in the top three of the languages that are required by industry at the moment and it has been for quite a while and so Python is a mandatory part of the first year of the course but if you go down the design production route in the second year you have to do a second language. Fantastic okay um, somebody has asked can you talk more about the Cisco uh, part-time course? Um, Sorry, is that the fact that we build it in or does somebody want to know about the course because they want to do it? Um, potentially, should we assume they're just interested in what the, what it involves? What the yes, absolutely. Is? So, so the Cisco courses are um, teacher led in that they teach them the, the knowledge and the skills that they need. And the one I'm thinking of in particular is our CCNA one where they have to look at um, connecting the technology together and how that all works. And at at the end of each, it's broken down into chapters and at the end of each chapter there is an assessment and students have to get a minimum grade in that assessment and then at the end of the course they have to take a final exam and that final exam is where they would then get certification. Okay, so hopefully that's answered um, uh, your question. Um, we haven't got any new ones coming in. So uh, I think we'll just give it a few more moments just in case that's um, spurred anyone else's thoughts. Um, is there anything, Michelle, that people tend to ask at our open events or, you know, especially around comparing a T level with the previous qualifications, you know, and if, if there's any major differences? Yeah, I think the major difference is because we used to deliver BTECs for this. The major differences are that you do specialise right from day one, so you do need to decide which pathway it is you want to take. So you need to be very clear when you enrol with us in August, which of the three pathways is of interest to you. Uh, and the fact that although we do set coursework, homework, um, none of that counts to the final grade. That is just to inform us how you are doing and hopefully plug any gaps in your skills or knowledge before you walk into the exams. 
Perfect, thank you. Okay, so we haven't had any new questions, so I think we'll close the call there. Um, and just a reminder for everybody uh, watching this presentation that we will put the recording up um, on the website in the next couple of days. So if you missed anything at the beginning or you wanted to watch it again, you can do exactly that. Oh, we have had one more question. Um, let's just dip in to that one. So can you confirm if I can take part in everything Farnborough offers, such as seeing the school and come to a judgment in August, if I will come or attend a different college? So I think they're saying, in, um, you know, is the wider offer available to T-level students and is there still time to apply, I think is. So from, from our point of view, absolutely, there's still time to apply. No problem at all with that. And yes, you'll still get an interview. You'll still be invited to summer college. Absolutely, you're treated as if you'd applied uh, way back before Christmas. Yeah, um, there isn't any more open events in case they were in case the person asking that one. So the open events sort of season has ended. Um, but um, the college is open on other times. So we've got an adult and degrees uh, open event coming up. So if you have a look at the website, you can see the dates for that. So you can kind of see the college itself, but um, it'll be slightly different purpose. But obviously you can still see what it's like to, to actually be on site. Um, and, sorry, Stephen, if I can just, and the, mm. the team that will be there for the HE and adult are the same team that teach the T levels. So they're more than welcome to come and ask any questions. Okay, that's perfect. Um, okay, I'll have one more question and then I'll close it off. Um, so we've been asked, how much lesson time is there each week? Okay, so all our students are full time students. And so we expect uh, a nine to five um, commitment to their studies on average. Uh, of course, they're not in the classroom from nine until five, so they spend roughly 18 to 20 hours in the classroom. The rest of the time is for personal study. So because it is equivalent to three A levels, there is an awful lot of work that has to be completed outside of lesson time, which is why we say on average, you'll be looking at doing a nine to five day, five days a week. Yeah, give um, give everyone a preview of the working life. <laughs> Less of a, a shock then, isn't there? Yeah. Um, OK, so let's uh, finish off there. If anybody does have any more questions, um, you can go to the T level that you're interested in on the college website and there is a section there that will read ask a question. Uh, simply follow that link and you can fill out a quick uh, form and I'll come over to Michelle or one of her team um, to get back to you. Um, from that same web page, so if you find the T level you're interested in, you can also make an application from that page. It's very simple, you just add the course to your basket, a bit like Amazon, um, and then you just follow the instructions. Uh, and remember, it doesn't matter how many courses you apply for or how many colleges. So if you think it's too late, it, it isn't. You can, um, you know, ha have multiple choices and then decide nearer the time, um, especially when you get your results, because that might help you to decide what, where your strengths are or what you want to do. Um, so do have a look at the website. Uh, most answers can be found there. And uh, we hope you enjoyed this presentation. So thank you again to Michelle and hopefully we look forward to seeing some of you for our summer college uh, in June. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.